the work done by a spring. We have a spring that uh, is on a frictionless surface here. Um, and if we would uh, compress the spring by 10 centimeters, that would require a 40 Newton force. Uh, that's just a characteristic of this particular spring. We want to know the work done on a 1.7 kilogram object as uh, Let's say we start at minus 5 centimeters from the equilibrium position, and then we come back to the equilibrium position. Uh, so how much work does a spring do on this object? Now, uh, some preliminaries. The uh, force of a spring is calculated this way, minus kx. k is the force constant. There's a minus sign here. The force of the spring and the displacement are actually in opposite directions. Um, the force and the displacement are in opposite directions. As that's why the minus sign is uh, is loaded on here. So we are going to calculate first the uh, uh, the force for I'm sorry, calculate the force constant. Given that we uh, have 40 newtons, I'm going to drop the minus sign. That's just a reminder that this force is a restoring force. Um, it's, as I would pull the spring off to the left here, that x would be negative, but the force of the spring is back positive as I apply force onto the, sp the spring to stretch it. Uh, but 40 newtons, k, and 0.1 meters. So I have to divide by 0.1 meters, and I get a value of 400 newtons per meter. That's the uh, force constant for this particular spring. Um, and we want to know how much work is done as we go from uh, this position to x equals 0. Well, we have a problem here. Uh, you might think of just simply multiplying the force by the distance traveled. This force is not constant. As x changes, as the spring is uh, at different, the end point of the spring is at different distances, um, here the force of the spring on the object is zero. Here we have maximum force on the object for this problem. Uh, so the, the force is not uh, constant and we're going to have to do an antiderivative and add up the contribution of uh, uh, the force and a little infinitesimal uh, displacement. So we do that with the antiderivative. Our lower limit is where we start. So 5 centimeters would be 0.05 meters. I want to do this in standard metric units. And our ending limit, we want to end up at the equilibrium position. Our force, minus 400 x. And then I have to uh, add up all over the in little infinitesimal uh, displacements that occur here. So in doing this, of course, we can take the minus 400 outside the antiderivative, and we have x dx. x dx is uh, pretty easily evaluated. Um, in doing the antiderivative, I increase the power by 1 and I divide by the new power. So the minus 400 is sitting out here. The antiderivative process of x to the first power, I increase the power by 1. That creates a 2, and I divide by that new power. So let's come down here, and let's evaluate this. So I could distribute the uh, 2 into the 400, divide that out. And the work then is a minus 200. Now we have to put in the upper limit, so that'll be a 0 squared over 2. And then I always do a subtraction when I evaluate the lower limit. And this lower limit is going to be minus 0.05 squared. I've already accounted for the 2. Um, so when we square minus 0.05, that's going to give a positive. But then we have this negative here, and the negative here, those two are going to cancel each other. Um, well on your calculator, you should go ahead and do this. 0.05 squared times 200. The 0.05 squared is 0.0025 times the minus 200 here. 
and you should get 0 0.5 joules. That's the work done on this object by the spring. It's the work done by the spring. Let's take a look at what's the change in the potential energy for this uh, this situation. And I'm going to do the work up here so you can still see the, the spring. Uh, the change in the potential energy would be what was the final potential energy minus the initial potential energy and the x final is a zero. We're ending up at the equilibrium point but we have one half 400 is our force constant and then our initial was minus 0.05 and we have to square that <clears throat> and you can see we're getting a similar result. The 2 and the 400, that's going to make 200 here, 0.05 squared. It's only that we have a difference of this um, squared is a positive. I have a minus sign here, so now I get minus 0 0.5 joules. And what has happened is that the potential energy of the spring, uh, 0.05 joules was lost in the potential energy of the spring, and instead we get work. And Let's do one more thing that I, I don't have typed out as a question here. But what's the speed of the object when we get to the equilibrium position? Um, well, we know that we're doing work on the object of 0 0.5 joules coming out of the spring. That 0 0.5 joules is going to be the kinetic energy of the object at the equilibrium point. The starting uh, kinetic energy is zero. Uh, we start at rest when the uh, object is back at the 0.05 centimeters to the left of the equilibrium position. So that's uh, our supply of energy. Our mass is 1.7 kilograms. So we multiply both sides by 2. We divide both sides by 1.7 and then we take a square root and you should do this on your calculator. I came up with 0 0.243 meters per second. Not an unreasonable, uh, too big of a, a velocity. But the uh, point here is you have to be careful if the force is variable. The spring problems are notorious for this. So you can't use F equals MA and then use the kinematic equations. The force is variable, so the acceleration is variable. Can't use the kinematic equations. Instead, you can use energy principles. Um, that's really, I think, a little bit easier than going through the antiderivative process. But I want to do the antiderivative process here to show you that it agrees with the uh, just standard book formula and potential energy of the spring, 1 half kx squared. So keep practicing with that. Make sure you do all these calculations yourself so you uh, understand how they're performed. And ask your instructor if you have questions.